The latest version of Star Citizen 3.9 has introduced Clasher Rehabilitation Facilities, or prisons, which is where you'll end up if you decide to become a pirate or do some bad things. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist and in this video I'm going to walk you through the experience of going to prison in Star Citizen. I'll take you through what it takes to get in, how you can get out, and if the experience is fun. I'll also explain why CIG thinks this is necessary and my own opinion on the matter. So sharpen your prison shanks and don't drop the soap. It's time to talk a bit about prisons. Three, two, one, open fire. Good oh, job. Down. So I think it might be a good idea to start with a little bit of a primer for those of you who are not up to date on Star Citizen's new law system. Last year, as of update 3.6, we got a law system that was jurisdictional, meaning that depending on where you are in the system, whether it be Hurston, Area 18, or Port Alisar, there are different laws that have different consequences and severity of punishment if you break them. Crimes are recorded locally via a satellite comlink that uploads the data to the local authorities. So say you murder somebody, an NPC or a player, you immediately will get a crime stat because you're within range of that comlink satellite and their ship is networked to it. Now there's a way to get around this and that's shutting the comlink off before you commit the crime, which does give you a small crime stat, but far less than, say, murdering the entire crew of a prison transport. Now, as a new player to Star Citizen, you might be tempted to do these things because it comes with great reward. Freeing this prison transport, for example, yielded 25,000 AUEC. But of course, doing such criminal things comes with great risk, and if you're not able to make it to safety to another jurisdiction that has more lenient laws, or reduce your crime stat via breaking into a security outpost and hacking down your database record to nothing, well then you might get caught by either the police on patrol or a player bounty hunter out for blood. Now in the future, you'll have to be physically apprehended by those authorities in order to end up in prison, but for now, all you have to do is die in the presence of a bounty hunter or security personnel to wake up at a clusher. Ending up in prison means all of your belongings have been confiscated and you've been issued a new prison suit. Pretty snazzy, eh? Now you got a couple of options here. You can stay in your prison cell or you can leave by enrolling in their work release program, which leads you out to the Pentoptica. Now this is where you can meet up with other prisoners and socialize, as well as grab some food. But most importantly, it's also where you can check the time remaining on your sentence. That information can be found at the center information terminal. It'll tell you depending on the amount of crime you've committed, in this case it was just trespassing, how long you gotta stay. Now in this case, I only did criminal trespassing, so since I got caught, I only have to stay in here for about 15 minutes. Maybe I did it multiple times and I'd have to stay in for an hour. In these cases, it might make a lot of sense for me to go reduce my sentence substantially by going into the work mines and doing a little bit of mining to reduce my sentence to nearly nothing. But it doesn't come without any risk. The mines are massive, and I, I mean massive. If you've played in caves before in Star Citizen, this is nothing like that. It's much bigger and much easier to get lost. There's also the little problem of not having any oxygen in these caves, and so every so often, you'll have to top off at one of the oxygen supply stations that you'll find sparingly inside of the caverns. And that's because they don't want you going off too far into the caverns and trying to escape. If that's not bad enough, you also have to worry about other prisoners. You see, there are stashes located about the caverns where you can find some supplies like food and water, which can help you escape if that's your goal. But they can also have shanks. Which means if you don't have any friends to watch your back, or you're not watching your own back, and you find a nice vein of hadnite to reduce your sentence by a few hours, well, you might get stabbed and your stash might get stolen so they can get out quicker than you. Make it back with your ore stash intact, and you'll be able to make it out much sooner than your original sentence. Attention! Attention! Please direct your attention towards the front gates. One of our guests has completed their rehabilitation and is being released. Let's give them a round of applause. Good luck back in the world, civilian. But let's say, for example, you're a very wanted pirate, and you finally get caught. You're sick of eating the prison food, and you're not getting out today or maybe even tomorrow, and you've got no desire to go mining. 
Well, you might want to consider escaping, but don't take it lightly. It's no easy task. Assuming you get past the armed guards and the automated turrets, and you avoid slipping and falling and impaling yourself and ending it back in the facility with an hour added, you might still run out of oxygen, food, or water before you reach the surface. But let's say you came prepared and you finally make it to daylight. Well, there's one other big problem you might want to consider. Clusher is located on Aberdeen, a moon orbiting Hurston, and the average surface temperature for daytime is 450 degrees Celsius and nighttime around 150. Star Citizen 3.9 has added environmental effects to players, meaning extremely hot or extremely cold environments will have detrimental effects on the player's health, causing severe dehydration or death due to exposure. Which you might think is fine because you'll just arrange a pickup, well, Clusher isn't exactly unguarded. There are turrets, and, well, they might not make it to you in time. Then there's also the problem of bounty hunters. Yeah, the moment you went into those caves, Clusher put a bounty on your head, and everybody in Stanton wants you dead. And finally, even if you manage to make it out alive, you still have to go through the trouble of clearing your crime stat because, oh yeah, they confiscated everything you own. So you won't have any weapons, you won't have any money, and you won't have any ships. So you will need other people's help in order to clear your crime stat and get back all of your inventory. Whoa, 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 you might be thinking now. That sounds insane. That sounds like I never want to go to prison. What? Well, it's kind of the idea, isn't it? You see, here's the thing. A lot of games do it the easy way. If you want to murder somebody in a town, in a city, you can't. There's some invisible force that prevents you from hacking them away. Well, not in Star Citizen. The whole philosophy behind this game and what they want to do with it is create a universe, and part of that is trying not to cut corners. It's part of the reason why it's taking so long, but also one of the reasons why I back it and love it so much. So why bother? Why not just create these artificial limits and stuff on players to prevent them from just killing each other all the time? Well, you see, by doing that, you limit the possibilities. You can't have that cool rooftop assassin that sneaks a gun past security to assassinate a high-value target in a highly populated area, something that Star Citizen wants to enable in the future. But obviously just opening the floodgates and letting people do that will open the door to people doing it all the time and it'll just become a free-for-all in all player cities. So CIG has made the argument that what they need to do is take that player off the field if they do get caught. That is the risk involved in doing criminal acts. But getting put in timeout doesn't have to be boring, and that's another argument CIG is making. Because you see, the prison experience, even though I've laid out all of these risks and all of these ways to die, is actually the most fun gameplay loop I've ever experienced in Star Citizen. Every jump was a white knuckle loin tingling experience, and when I was streaming it together with my community, they had the same feeling just watching. The, the feeling of vertigo, the, the fear was real, and it was wonderful to get that out of Star Citizen. And to that end, I don't think I'm going to be making a tutorial video of how to escape prison because I think that that's something that you should discover on your own because it is a lot of fun to do so. Utilizing people in game, using VoIP, teaming up with other inmates to try to get out is incredible and immersive. And if I just tell you how to do it, it's going to completely destroy the experience. Now, some people have pointed out that there's a downside to this and that there is eventually going to be a discovered fastest way out and that you'll be able to meta it down to a few minutes or something ridiculous. And to some extent, this has already been managed even just in first wave PTU. But here's the thing. No matter how fast you're able to make it out of the caves, there's still the multiple things you have to get through in order to just get out. And ultimately, the goal of getting you out of the playing field because you got caught is achieved. You are sinking time into this fun experience, and you're not continually ramming somebody on a pad because of it. Additionally, I think that the PU release is going to be a very different experience, because now that we have persistence of inventory, people have a lot more to lose. They don't want to end up in prison, they want to continually earn money, and so they're going to try to avoid it at every turn. And If they do get caught, something else that you should keep in mind is that 
I think that this is going to be our next jump town. This is where all of the PvP players are going to be coalescing, and that trying to escape is going to be a lot harder than it appears right now on live streams and on videos because so many people are going to be waiting outside to kill escapees, just to PvP other players. And it's already really just started to happen. People are getting past doing the puzzle and are now looking for that PvP experience in the PTU, and they're doing it here at Klesher. There are now organizations camping out trying to kill people they specifically don't like and don't want to escape from prison. People who, for example, have repeatedly harassed their traders. And it's understandable then that these organizations would want that individual to serve out their sentence. So if you get a chance, Try the prison experience as soon as you can once it comes to live or if you have PTU access because I think after a certain point it's going to be really hard to escape using the prison escape method. It's also worth noting that the escape route that I used on stream is only one of a few possible ways out. Apparently there's ways out through the mining caves that people have yet to discover. I'm really interested to see who finds it first. I have to admit, I was skeptical at first about prisons. I thought that they might be a really tough sell. But after having experienced it myself and after chat having seen it for themselves in uh, my Twitch stream, I think everybody has agreed. This is awesome and we want more stuff like this. CIG, keep going. This is great. And even better is that CIG has said that they're planning on adding even more to prisons in the future, like specific mission givers that will give you unique items and unique quests that will make the experience itself even more enjoyable. Flushing out the underbelly of the Star Citizen universe a little bit more. It isn't perfect though, obviously. Some people have encountered some physics issues bouncing off walls because of the low gravity environment, but I think what it really needs right now is more player movement options. Being able to sidestep small and very thin ledges, and also being able to catch a ledge if you just barely miss it so that you can pull yourself up. I think that these added features could make the experience a little bit more immersive and maybe even forgiving if you're able to just barely make that leap. But what do you guys think? How was your experience in the prison if you experienced it yourself or if you've watched me on stream, do it? I want to know down in the comments section below. Also, if you are new to Star Citizen and you're intrigued and you've done a lot of research now and you really want to get yourself into it today, make sure you use the referral code down below and check my other videos in my library which introduce you to the game starting off like a new player guide and your first ship. Those videos will really help you along the way. And I'm also working on a new video talking about how you can upgrade your starter ship to be just as competent as any other mid-range fighter in the game. So thank you so much for watching. If you appreciate the work that I do and want to see more videos like this, you know what to do, and I hope to see you guys next time.